In this video, we're going to have a look at Orico M2 N210 RC3 unit, which is a USB Type-C M2 SATA enclosure, which has two drive bays. It is capable of running in different read modes, and it uses a USB 3.1 Gen 2 interface, which is capable of running up to 10 gigabit speeds, or in other words, 1.25 gigabytes per second. It has the same speed as USB 3.2 Gen 2 and is compatible with both higher and lower speed USB interfaces so you can connect it to your laptop or desktop even if you don't have the exact same one but the speed will be affected accordingly. Orico sent me this unit for testing so let's see how it does. This is a complete content of the package, a thanks card, user's manual, two silicone thermal pads for M.2 drives, a small screwdriver, two silicone plugs, a USB Type-C to USB Type-C data cable, a USB Type-C to USB Type-A data cable, this is for devices which don't have a Type-C port. An additional USB Type-A power cable, this one will be necessary for older computers, we don't have a modern Type-C port. And the Orico M2 N210 RC3 unit. Let's check out the length of the cables. The power cable is 1 meter long. USB Type-C to USB Type-A data cable is 50 centimeters long and USB Type-C to USB Type-C data cable is 56.5 cm long. Let's check out the dimensions of this enclosure. The length is 11.5 cm, the width is 6.5 cm, and the height is 1.75 cm. So it's quite compact. The unit weighs 157 grams without any drives installed and the USB Type-C cable weighs 18 grams. So altogether it is 175 grams. Let's make a quick visual comparison with other USB Type-C enclosures. This one is for M.2 SATA drives, these two are for M.2 NVMe drives and this one is for 2.5 inch drives. Keep in mind that all of these devices are only for a single drive and this one can house two. The whole body of this enclosure is made of aluminum alloy which was sandbrushed and anodized and feels nice to the touch. You won't leave fingerprints on it easily. It also feels kind of soft, I would say. The whole unit feels robust and kind of heavy. As you can see, it also has four rubber legs from the bottom which protect it from scratching your table. When we turn it to the front we can see that it has a set button, USB Type-C port, additional power port and status LED. The power input runs at 5 volts and by default there is no need to use it. It is only for cases when the USB port doesn't provide enough power which is likely to happen only in situations when it is connected to a USB Type-A computer port with second enclosed data cable. When we look at the lid, it has this heatsink on it and it is held only by one screw. So let's unscrew it and take a look what's inside. I'll use the provided screwdriver to unscrew it. I can see that the lid is quite heavy, it weighs 39 grams.
What I found interesting is a thermal design of this enclosure, which is using solid metal at the bottom, compared to these, which are using just a plastic PCB. So this one will have the advantage of cooling the SSD from both sides, because the upper part will be covered by a thermal pad, which will be touching this lid. When we look at the enclosure in close up, we can see that each of the drive bays has a status LED above it. When the LED is blinking, it indicates reading or writing and static red means that the drive has failed and needs to be replaced. Both drive bays support M.2 SATA drives with B key or B and M key and are compatible with sizes 2230, 2242, 2260 and 2280. The supported drive capacities are up to 2 terabytes, but because the enclosure uses a AS Media ASM 1352R controller chip, it is probable that it will support larger capacities later as well, at least according to its manufacturer's website. Each of the modes can be set using this little red switch, in PM mode, which is also the default, each of the drives is visible as a single drive in OS and operates independently. RAID 0 mode under it, the manual also calls it a quick mode, significantly improves the speed of read and write operations, the capacity of both drives is added and both drives are visible in OS as one, but if any of the drives fails, all data is lost. RAID 1 mode or in other words, a mirroring mode is a specific implementation of standard RAID 1. It writes identical data to both drives simultaneously, so in case that one of the drive fails, the data can still be read from the other drive. The speed of both read and write operations is identical to a single drive operation, unlike in real RAID 1. After I simulated a drive failure by formatting one of the drives and inserting it back, the enclosure noticed it by lighting the drive status LED to red and set the functioning drive to read-only mode so that the user is notified that something has happened. At the time of this review, the current firmware for automatic rate array rebuild didn't work, so the only option was doing it manually. The last mode available is JBoard, or in other words, just a bunch of drives. This mode combines capacities of both drives together and makes them visible in OS as one logical drive. The data transfer speed is the same as running a single drive. The data is written to one of the drives until it's full and then continues writing to the other physical drive. If any one of the drive fails, all data is lost. And one last thing before we move to the installation. This unit has a smart sleep function, so it turns itself off after 10 minutes when not being used. And the supported operating systems are Windows, Mac OS and Linux, so most people will be satisfied. Finally, it's time for the installation. It's super easy, so no talking will be necessary. Before you can start using the enclosure, it is necessary to initialize the drives.
Setting the enclosure into any RAID mode is very easy. All you need to do is to set the switch to any RAID position you like, then you screw back the metal lid, then you connect the USB-C cable into the port on your PC, and you press and hold the set button for 5 seconds until the red light blinks once, Then you release it and both drives are set. Then you initialize the drives in OS the same way I showed you before. So now is the time for the performance testing. In synthetic benchmarks, Orico M2 and 210 RC3 showed that it can take full advantage of USB 3.1 Gen 2 interface when running in single RAID 1 and JBOD mode. Remember that the drives are limited primarily by SATA interface. In RAID 0, the speed was almost doubled, which was expected, so it lived up to its promise. However, synthetic benchmarks never show the whole picture. Only testing real-life scenarios can do that. So, let's take a look at them and let's start with write speed tests. In a single mode, JBoard and RAID 1 mode, the speed was identical. Writing 20 GB to the SSD in the enclosure took 39 seconds. 10 GB consisting of 8000 small files took 45 seconds. And writing 20 GB in RAID 0 mode took 28 seconds. And writing 10 GB in RAID 0 mode, consisting of 8000 small files, took 32 seconds. Let's take a look at the read speed tests. In a single mode, JBoard and RAID 1 mode, the speed was also identical. Copying 20 GB from the enclosure took 38 seconds. 10 GB consisting of 8000 small files took 38 seconds. An interesting result. And copying 20 GB from RAID 0 to just 23 seconds, which is 15 seconds faster than the other modes. And copying 10 GB consisting of 8000 small files took 28 seconds, which is 10 seconds faster than other RAID modes. And finally, let's take a look at the most intense temperature test where both drives were writing simultaneously. 100 GB of data is being copied to the enclosure. The ambient temperature is 24.5 degrees Celsius. During the duration of the test, the temperature of the drives has risen only by 4 and 5 degrees Celsius, which is a very good result showing us that the thermal design of the enclosure is solid. For a SATA drive-based enclosure, Orico M2 and 210 RC3 performed very well. The only issue I found during the whole testing was the absence of RAID 1 array rebuild capability, which will probably be fixed in some future firmware update. For its price, which is currently around $50 US on Amazon, it is very capable enclosure and is definitely worth considering. And from me, I think I have covered everything I wanted in this review. So thank you for watching and see you in the next one.